Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Before we put Eric of South Main Auto's impact back in our box, on this tool's last episode, we promised we would get some data on the effect air hose size has on power. Being as this impact appears to be air hungry, or at least is designed to supply a lot of air via its 3.8 NPT inlet, we felt it was a good opportunity to settle the argument over air lines. Maybe not once and for all, as this is just one test case, but at least provide some data in a way we've not seen shown before. Today we're going to test this half inch air impact with the three most common airline sizes found around the shop and at home. That includes this quarter inch inside diameter poly coil hose, the 3 8 ID rubber air hose we normally use on this channel since that's what each air tool has called for so far, and this new half inch ID rubber air hose. All of the hoses will be 25 foot as usual on this channel and they'll all use Milton V-type High Flow Pro air fittings. The quarter inch and three-eighths air hoses take a standard Milton V fitting, which we use with our Milton 5 and one 67 CFM quick coupler on both ends of the hose as usual. And the half inch air hose takes three-eighths air fittings and matching Milton coupler to fit the gun and the hose thread sizes. The half inch hose was directly threaded into our wall mount in this case, as the wall mounts threads were also three-eighths. The pressure we run this gun with is set as usual by adjusting the wall regulator until we see 90 PSI running in the tool, that's called dynamic pressure, or for the best case scenario test, 150 PSI static, and that pressure level drops to whatever it does once the tool's running. If you're also interested in how different couplers and popular air fittings alone affect power on an impact wrench, let us know in the comments and list your favorite types. That might take us a while to put together, but we'd be happy to perform those tests if you want. We'll be doing our working torque test, which is a 5 second forward test at 90 PSI dynamic, and our best case scenario test as well, which is 150 PSI static, to see what kind of differences at high pressure you might see, if any. So with two tests and three different hoses to show, let's get into it already. Here's working torque. In each series, it will show the quarter inch, and then 3 eighths, followed by the half inch for each test. So in this dynamic pressure controlled test, the half inch comes out the gate making quite a bit more power. Then at the end of the 5 seconds is only making a bit more power than the 3 eighths, but both of them making a ton more power than the quarter inch, at least 30% in this case. Let's check out how the best case scenario looks at 150 psi static pressure. So on this 15 second high pressure test, it seems like the quarter inch line can mostly supply SMAs, 
impact wrench up to three seconds. After that, maybe the pressure in the line has been exhausted and the actual peak flow rate of the quarter inch hose can no longer supply the large air motor in the impact wrench. So you see it dipping off at the three, four second mark and making a more gentle curve. For the three eighths and half inch air hose, it does appear to be a different story that they both can supply the impact wrench adequately. At two, three, four, five seconds, the half inch airlines making 60, 65, 70 foot pounds more than the three eighths, but up to 15 seconds and what is probably a reliable level of airflow for the impact wrench versus the airline. The half inch airline does end up making 840 versus the 3 8 805, but that's around a 5% difference after this amount of time. Not as significant as we were expecting considering the size of this impact wrench, and it's probably more akin to if you have a Milwaukee impact strapping on a different battery size that's larger than the one you have now. It's going to be a difference and maybe enough to break a bolt loose that's rusted in those first two, three, four seconds but over time not make a drastic difference. As for the quarter inch, yeah, you're leaving a lot on the table if you use that. This is 200, 260 foot pound difference, and that's pretty much felt everywhere. Now what we're not taking into account is the line length. These are all 25 foot hoses, which is about as short as it gets. Over a longer length, the larger hose size is gonna be able to sustain that pressure better. So if you're dealing with a 50 or even longer foot hose, the half inch airline is going to be able to supply that 800 to 840 much more reliably than a 3 8 hose will. So while air hose size is obviously important, especially if you're slumming it with a quarter inch, we feel at the end of the day it still comes down to tool choice. Here is the South Main Auto with a quarter inch versus the standard on our channel which is an IR231H. And it still puts a gap on that, which just shows you how far we've come in the last 30 to 35 years of air tool development. So what would that look like in our ranking, assuming for a second we'll allow it to use this half-inch airline? These three torque test ratings will have to change. So the working torque will be updated to 558, which is 56 points. Max torque, which we also tested, would be updated to 752, which becomes 75 points. And then the 840 foot-pounds we saw would be updated to 84. That makes for when you divide it over its 6.7-inch length. 125.4 points for length per foot pound. And then for its advertised torque claim, the 840 becomes 84% of a thousand. Again, that's a fake advertised torque claim of a thousand. Then foot pounds per dollar, you divide that over this 250 times 15, and that increases its points rating to 50.4. So that increases its overall rating to 474.8 points. And that's out of a theoretical 500. So pretty tops in that regard. Then for the notes, we've got to add that these torque levels were made with a half-inch airline. As we get more contenders and the top 10 fills up, we'll probably drop this SMA impact off the list. On our next AirTool episode, we get to dive into the AirCat 1250K, which is a good opportunity to show how it works and compare its power versus the other AirCat models we've tested so far in the ranking. Subscribe and stick around if you want to see that. Thanks for watching.